So welcome to our very first episode of Facts and Two Cents. Our handle on Twitter and Instagram, Facts and Two Cents. And uh, you're here with Pamela, P. And Petal. Oh, yes, exactly. So we are just fascinated about all that's going on in our universe, unless you're living under the rocks and you don't know what's going on, uh, we will bring you the facts. That's basically what it is. And then we'll add our own two cents to it. Uh, to give you, you know, a very comical, uh, com- 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 comical is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> comical <laughs> <under time. laughs> yep. So as you can see, this is how the show is going to be. There's, the times will be really <laughs> serious and times we're just going to have fun with it. So enjoy with us. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot going on in our community, right? In the world as a whole. Um, and we want to bring you the facts. Um, currently, it's uh, the royal, the British royal to be specific. And we want to narrow it down to our two faves. Well, a couple of our faves. So it will be Harry and Meghan, Archie, and someone that Pedro's named Baby Man- Montes- Montesito. Baby um, Montesito. Montesito. <laughs> um, and Pula, Guy, Doria. Mama Doria and uh, the whole gang, right? We want to really just uh, talk about them. And like, you know, I think Pedro said earlier, which is not, you you didn't hear it, but she says, you know, we, we own our pettiness. Um, and uh, what we own our wanted? bias and we own our, our bias. And our, yes, we own our <laughs> bias yes. and we own our pettiness. So don't come for us because we've already said disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> we are biased so if you know we're biased don't come here and argue you know yeah. what I mean it's like <laughs> it's just clear it's a moot point we are biased we are not we are... here for the English royals we are not here yes. for them we're not here <laughs> we for the only English here royals for the ones. yeah <laughs> don't come for us unless we send for you cook from yes. King <laughs> 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 and uh, the devil is a liar you know so anyway so we are here to just name what we see what talk about what we see and what we hear and our research so yeah so Peter, what do you want to add to it before we kick this whole new episode going so yeah um one of the the, the big things um that's been happening the last couple of weeks i mean you may have heard of this tiny little interview yeah uh, with oprah <laughs> that um, our faves in montecito did um yeah. on march 7th and it was this tiny little thing that nobody heard of at all around the world but yeah they had a sit down we happen to hear it though oh yeah we we heard about it so we are here to tell you because we know you have better things in your day to do and so you didn't hear anything about this at all so we are here to you know give you the facts about Absolutely. Anyway, so on March 7th, um, Megan and Harry Alves did this uh, interview with Oprah basically about why they decided to leave um, the royal family, not leave the royal family, but leave, step back as right. working royals of the, mem- of the royal family and move a whole continent, well, actually, to a whole continent a away from them <laughs> yeah. to start a whole new life in Montecito, California. Well, um, you know, originally they planned to actually start that life in uh, in Canada because it's part of the Commonwealth and they thought, you know, but then with COVID and everything, neither of them being um neither of them being Canadians and the borders were closing, they didn't really have much of a choice but to move. Well, there was more to it before, you know, there was more to the reason why they, yeah. So we're going to talk about that. But just, you know, how we got to Montecito. Right, right, right. (laughs) How we got to California. Plus, you know, that's Megan's hometown anyway. So Mm -hmm. it just stands to reason. So back to this little interview that they did on March 7th. Um, There are so many things that came out of that interview, so many shocking things. Um, But if you really have been following them, it's not all that shocking. But, you know, you know, it just sort of confirms what it was obviously there. What the squad, you know, yeah, what the squad has known for the past four years, right? been highlighting so the fan the fan group and followers of our faves we tend to refer to ourselves as the squad the success squad online so that's the way you will find a lot of us but there's so much that i feel like i actually think the fbi should hide some of the success squads because yeah seriously the invest- <laughs> investigative like acumen is like none other you know what I mean? It's like they 
I said they as I'm a part of it, but like, yeah, like, but those, the individuals who do the research and have, you know, even servers to like back up receipts. It's like, they didn't come to play. It's, yeah, the squad have receipts for just about everything. Everything, like, everything. <laughs> you post it, they save it. You post it, they save it. <laughs> the squad will have receipts about things you're like, didn't oh, you even do? know exist. Like you have receipts? Nobody else but the squad know. And they will have, and the one thing about the squad is, they're not afraid to post, they're not afraid to use oh. the receipts. No, yeah. It is like, like don't come for them. <laughs> don't come for us. Like they will. I keep saying them as though I got. I say them because I know I, I I don't have them receipts, so I'm saying them. But it's us, right? Like people <laughs> don't totally. receipt out of nowhere. They're like, oh, in 1994, mm. you know, before <laughs> before Harry was even born. I'm just kidding. But you know, they'll just have all these receipts and be like laid out alphabetically that will make sense and as they lay those receipts out the storytelling right they're telling mm-hmm. the story so you're following you're like you're not confused like you get it <laughs> so I love it so one of the things that I mean among a whole bunch yeah. of big things that came up in the interview is um uh the response I mean is is um Megan and Harry's claim that someone in their family they didn't say who the person is <laughs> they didn't say if it was a senior member of the Farrell family or if it was one of the you know not right. senior members <laughs> you don't want to say minor <laughs> but that's how they term it um they just said a member of the royal family raised concerns about the color of Archie's skin when he you know right. he wasn't born yet but they were concerned of what his skin the shade of his skin. What did we know be. it was a male or female? We're just concerned about right. the baby. There yeah. was just this concern. Right. And so there was like a whole lot of noise or talk, talk around this. But yeah. w- one of the things that I wanted to talk about was the response mm. to it. You know, how okay. people responded to that when they heard that, oh my gosh, someone in the royal family would you know is yeah. you know said this racist thing or and it's just like why would you be concerned about you know the what, color what triggered of the you what 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 got you your mind like going like okay wait a minute the response what, your response yeah what triggered i you think it response? was how quickly knowing and, and and being you know for the last couple of years just being sort of in tune with how the British people think in terms of race, how they respond in res- terms of race. I was very surprised. Well, you're surprised? I, I, I was just going to go back. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I knew, right. you know, how quickly they're like, no, I'm not racist. We're not racist. But it still surprised me that people still said it. I had to yeah. be like, are you serious? Have we not been bringing this up over and over and over and over? And I think of Dr. Shola, who is on every television right. show in, 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 in England talking about this. I was surprised to see people actually are still shocked about this. Right, yeah. So, and I'm like, have you not been listening? Has Harry not been talking about structural racism this whole time? Here's the thing, though. Here's, here's, here's the point. For most Brits, they're either from Caribbean descent or African descent, right? For most, majority of the time. Like the Blacks, I should say. Sorry, right. I meant the yeah. Blacks. Uh, um, so correct, I'm correct myself. I meant, I meant the Black Brits. Mostly it's yeah. African descent or Caribbean descent. So just that, those two alone... <laughs> It's colonization, right? So, so you can't say there's no racism from that place. That just shuts that argument down right away. So for any African or Caribbean descent who lives in the UK to say that there's no racism, I'm floored by that, right? Your ancestors were enslaved. Whether you like it or not, you believe it or not, it does. <laughs> they did. Uh, so that alone just shuts down the argument. The, the entire premise of sovereignty of the monarchy is built on slavery, colonization, 
and racism. I mean, imperialism is like all those things. It's, which part is confusing? Uh, I it just baffles me to, all of it because to, to, <laughs> to think that that doesn't exist. Now you might not have encountered racism with a royal because you don't live with them like Megan did. You just went into the one of their palaces and got an award, member of the um, uh, British Empire, MP, you know whatever <laughs> they call it. The you got an award, and the OBE. MPE, yeah, and they just you know night at you or whatever the case may be and you left and you felt oh they are so lovely and they probably were lovely that moment it doesn't change what that whole institution is built on right it doesn't change the possibility of people working within those institutions who have a different mindset so you might not have experienced it doesn't mean someone did it and so to belittle or to take away someone's experience is just foul yeah and I think too, you know, it's, you know, I, I think back to say Prince Williams, uh, you know, he was doing one of their, um, he, him and Kate went off, went out on one of their, um, to meet with one of their patronages and, and a reporter, um, which I honestly think was a setup, um, but a reporter asked him, you know, can you tell us, sir, how, you know, is the royal family racist? And his response was, we are very much not a racist family. Right. And it's one of those things you're like, Prince William, have you met your family? <laughs> Why do you think it's a setup? That's intriguing. I never even think about that. Never thought about huh? that. It never crossed my mind that it could be a setup. Why do you think, what makes you think it's a setup? It was one of those things where I, in, for me, I felt like William wanted to address this. Mm. I feel like he wanted to say something about it because I've been looking at his character. He's, you know, he's definitely competitive. He's definitely, and I honestly, you know, it's just, it just could be me, but I just felt like it was one of those things. Because it didn't you know? really make sense and out it, of the blue. That's yeah. why the question was asked, right? To yeah. think about it, it's like. And, and even if it wasn't, for him to say that, it was it was one of those things like, you know, you know that mod their motto is never complain, never explain. This was one of those That's times fair. that that should have been zip it. Right. Um, if only well, because Charles there did is it. so Charles much didn't documented say a word. evidence online, which people have been posting all the time since he said that, there's right. so much documented evidence of people in the royal family saying racist stuff. The only shock for me is when Prince Harry said that it was not his grandfather because that was be the first one that I would think. <laughs> that was what, who was this comedian? Was shocking in that whole there was this comedian, was Ol 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 Oliver. Who's the name of that comedian? Um, uh, the British comedian who resides in the, in the US. Um, not, not the one that did the, uh, not James Gordon, the other one. He does a, a late night weekly with, Last week with uh, Oliver, I think his name is. Anyways, he Jimmy. Yeah, okay. I don't know. So he so said I, I he said when uh, Prince Harry said, "Oh, it wasn't um, um, his grandfather or grandmother." He's like, he was shocked. He was like, "Your, your grandfather? Oh, All people oh, should be yes. him." <laughs> racist stuff it's like he has a history and not just about yeah. black people with asian people it's calling them like slanty eyes and it's like i yeah. mean he just says stuff that is just and even you know i just even came across an article where um an article in the guardian from 2018 actually where this um and it was part of a commonwealth like seminar thing that they were doing where this um, writer, the, the, the lady who wrote the piece from The Guardian met right. Prince Charles and she, you know, he asked the, her, you know, well, where are you from? And she's like, from Manchester. And his comment was, well, you don't look like you're from Manchester. <laughs> and so she yeah, I, I read, I saw that. an article of, am I, uh, you yeah. know, am I not, 
I think it says, am I not brown enough or something? Or am I not white enough to be from Manchester? And I have to go back to the, the name of the specific um, title of the article. I should have had it um, with me, but it's just, he, they say stuff like this all the time. So to think that someone in your family, I mean, it's not just them, you know, we, we have Princess Michael with that, the, <laughs> the brooch. We have Prince Andrew saying, you know, um, racist stuff. I mean, it's documented online. So for Prince mm -hmm. William to come and say, like, oh, we're very much not a racist. Damn it. it there's also called the thing called unconscious bias. It's like, mm. you know, you don't yeah. say stupid stuff, but especially when it's so documented all right. over the internet that could throw yeah. it right back at you. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. Megan talked about, you know, having suicidal thoughts. Oh, yeah. And wanting to kill herself. Got, got into a place where she was so low that right. while pregnant with Archie, she yeah. wanted to kill herself. Yeah. And what that, one that of the things that was so... I cried when I was watching Yeah, that. That, that really made me cry. Yeah. And you know what? I wasn't surprised because I remember when all this was so bad while she was pregnant, I kept thinking, how could she survive this? Like, how could she handle this? Yeah. Because this that's, was... That's her not even reading the magazine. Th yeah. I was reading them. I saw the articles and I was like, it wasn't about me. And I'm thinking, I was thinking, oh my gosh. It was overwhelming just even reading it. So I can understand how her friends and mom will call her and express that overwhelmness, you know, yeah. to her. Because you're, even as a reader, you needed an outlet to let it out because you're taking all this information in and it does, it's not about you. It's about somebody that you just happen to like and admire and you just feel overwhelmed it's the you know carry this load and you're like yeah. oh my god so i completely understand how she would feel but just being a third receiving it from a second or third person right and exactly they, yeah. i mean i felt damaged i had to like put away i had to stop reading that stuff because i as a reader felt damaged right so imagine her who that was you know about and who the person that is coming at every single day yeah. and so for me when she talked about that one of the most disheartening thing and, and i wasn't shocked to see it because there's so many things in line about her lying and about her fake baby and all this horrible stuff about her but it was so disheartening still to see how many people were yeah. calling her a liar yeah and then yeah. to see people like pierce morgan on national television Mm. calling her a liar because yeah. you know i kept thinking like oh my gosh if i was a suicidal person at that moment watching someone who is a world figure talking to a worldwide audience of over 60 million people sharing with them that she was about to kill herself with her baby and to have people on national tv included calling her a liar yeah. If I was suicidal, what would happen to me? Exactly. Yeah. And that is why she wrote that letter right away. Um, exactly. IT is it ITV? Oh, I'm not Yeah, it was right ITV, a uh, GMB, which, you okay. know, yeah. 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 Because it's not, it's not about her just sharing her story. It's about what that represents. Right? Exactly. And, and people might be watching and instead of having them, listen, you don't have to like her, which I don't know why you wouldn't because she hasn't done anything to you. But if you choose not to, for some reason, you can't deny somebody's lived experience. Yeah, you didn't live that experience. So it's not up to you to deny that or deny them of that, right? It's like, she just, why would she come on a national, a, a global stage and lie? And about something like that. About something like you that. Know what I mean? And that says only, more and about you. Like that. that says more about you questioning that than her. Because exactly. you, and the, you know what the sad you, part of this is? The sad what? part of this is that the people were saying, well, they don't believe she went to, to HR. They don't believe Valentin right. Lowe, the, the, um, the Times writer who broke, you know, who the palace used with their smear campaign of bullying. Right who broke that story, Valentin Low did a podcast. Mm. And on that podcast, Valentin Low said in 2019, 
he was told the palace leaked information that they knew. He knew that Megan was going through a mental distress. He didn't know that she was suicidal. He knew that she was going through mental distress and he oh knew God. that she went to HR for help. Look at the that. palace leaked that information. So royal reporters knew that Megan was going through mental distress in 2019. But they they knew on. she went to HR for help because he said it on the podcast. And they still but then they kept continue to him. abuse her. They wanted to kill her. They, they wanted, wanted to kill her. It, they wanted yeah. to kill her. And you know what also like just stood out to me during the whole conversation when she was talking about how they had to go to the Albert, uh, Albert Hall um, event. I would never night. forget that. And yeah. you remember when she sat down and, and Harry extended her yeah. hands and she said, thank you. We were all kind of like, oh, we thought Harry was, and he was, rightfully so. He was in distress. He was not in a good space because that same day she had told him she, was, she wanted yeah, to kill herself. She wanted to go. I would not, that video has haunted me for so yeah. long because I yeah. thought Harry, honestly, what I thought was happening was Harry was having a PTSD moment. Megan has a tendency of just smiling often. You know, she just, she just like, some people just smile through things. Right, their default is to smile. Smile, yeah. And so, yeah. So you can see that she was smiling, but the smile was kind of like a bit forced. If you can see, it wasn't her jet normal. Right, yeah. Cool green, yeah. right? She, at certain moments, you can see she had this tight look on her face. Right. Um, so, but we didn't, obviously, we didn't know hindsight is 2020. We didn't know at that point that this is what was taking place. I knew, I, we, I think we all thought something was going wrong and we thought it was more With, Harry. Yeah, because Harry can't hide his feelings. He just wears yeah. his feelings on yeah. his sleeve. So, you know when something is wrong. Right. Yeah. And that is why her friend thought they looked really great, right? When the friends started the pictures, like, you guys look beautiful, amazing. But now you can tell, the, you can see yeah you look at it you're like wow because he gave him gave her his hand and she said thank you because i was even thinking why would she say thank you for him extending her hand to, to her but because he knew what was going on right and he just needed to keep her close so yeah. that's that there's so much revelations if you want to you know, yeah. look at it which is so amazing and i just felt i just really really i still feel for them but I know that they're in a better place now and they're thriving like you said yeah but we cannot forget you know no all that no, happened that and we are going to name them and you know pull things yeah. out but yeah so yeah so absolutely yeah, that yeah was, I think yeah the fact that they this is not the first time the second time the third time that the royal family has ignored someone's mental health yeah. you know it just came mm -hmm. out that i saw that they did the same thing with with the queen's sister you know oh, oh well that was the crown showed it i mean whether you believe the crown yeah. or not it was on the crown and my great was like left to left to you know her own devices Drink herself to death Drink herself to death you know what i mean yeah. and denying herself so it was Margaret, it was diana it was peggy um it was it just, uh, yeah. and, and 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 megan Right. And then so, and the worst part of it is like they are championing these, you know, mental health initiatives. And it's like you're damaging the, the very people. It's like for, so for me, it's all about the initiative, but not exactly about the people, because if you care yeah. about people, you would be caring about the people. Right. Right and there. so now they're hiring a, di a diversity uh, uh, person to come in. And I was like, you had the diversity person. Meghan Markle, you could have just talked to her. How about you go talk to her and she can help you. Like she is a perfect person for you, but you still haven't spoken well. to her. And as of last Tuesday, they didn't even pick up the phone. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah, to talk to her, but you're going to go have a diversity person to come help with her diversity within the palaces and the households. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's about optics. optics. They, yeah, yeah, they just want, they want Makes to. Makes me want to ask you this question something. though. Who do you think said the whole skin call about the baby? Oh, I mean, William. <laughs> 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 and you know, I think it's genius that Harry and Meghan did not name that person. When they didn't name it, I thought they're, let, they're just giving them rope to hang themselves. Because you will see, and it's exactly what is happening. I have seen so many puff pieces. On, at this point, I expect every single 
<laughs> magazine, every newspaper, every broadcaster has oh a special gosh. about oh, how William. wonderful Prince William is. <laughs> the other brother. He <laughs> is. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't like a Sussex squad said the, I mean, we always call him the other brother, but to see but, it actually yeah. in print by yeah. people and who were supposed a, 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 to be bringing him up. Like, having oh. a military <laughs> uniform on. I'm like, dude, he didn't even, did he even serve? The, no. He, well, no. And not only that, that picture of that other brother picture, it was from 2012. It was from a 2012 photo shoot oh, that he did with the queen and also Camilla. It's, a, yeah. it's from a photo shoot that was done in 2012 and it was released. Um, People magazine had um, an article about it. It came out in 2015. That's mm. why it wasn't even an official event where they got that because you, um, the Queen and Camilla have pictures because um, that picture is, it's sort of like it's set in a mirror. And so it has like three other reflections of him. You find the same picture of the Queen and also Camilla. They all three did the same thing. Oh, and wow. so you have this so this is a picture from 2012. They could not even get a, you know. Right. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah. I it's, understand. It's, again, facts. Facts. You know? <laughs> facts and not two cents. Not two cents is that's not, you know, who he is. He shouldn't be wearing. Because if anything, you know what amazed me? What they, I think the tablets did before when they had, I don't remember. I don't think you remember this magazine. I don't can't remember which one. They had. William in a military uniform and they had Harry in a civilian outfit. And I was just like, yeah, it was the, t- it was the, the times, it um, Valentine, uh, I think it was Valentine Lowe who wrote the article. I think I could be wrong, but it was the times article and it was, yes, it, they had mm-hmm. Prince William in the uniform, the one who did not serve in the mil- you know, military yeah. and Harry in the civ- civilian clothes, the one who actually did two tours of duty in Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the article that says, I cannot put my arms around my brother oh, anymore. I my brother anymore. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they changed it to, um, Harry needs me work part of the team or some stupidness like that. Right. And yeah. right after that, the, the, when Harry and Meghan were, you know, um, I think when they were leaving, I think, there was this article that came out that Prince William, um, Harry and Meghan left because they felt bullied by Prince William. And that was the Times article that Valentino Lowe wrote. Mm. Later that day, it came out, they put out uh, the, the, the palace supposedly put that? out an article yeah. Yeah. that Harry and, um, Harry and William said that, no, that's false. Right. And I remember when that came out and they refuted the article that Prince William was a bully and it says Harry and, Harry and William. And I remember thinking, I don't think Harry had anything to do with that. And I remember and came out that he did. Thing, all of this was like, no, this is a William statement. And yeah. only the thing to come out this week that, yes, this statement did not come from Harry. Look it at that. It came from William. Look at that. <laughs> and so the yeah. last thing um, I was thinking about, about the interview, was mm-hmm. the double standard in reporting. How biased yeah. <laughs> how yeah. unethical yeah, how hypocritical yeah. the british press reporting is yeah. and so what case in point was this past um this past week um tuesday um gail king um right. had an update <laughs> yeah had an update on harry and megan about you know well gail they- called them to check up on them Right, let's just yeah. You'll call them, check up on, them. on them to see how and they I, were doing. And it seems like his... she was speaking with Harry because Harry was saying, you know, yeah. So go ahead. Coming out of the interview was that they had a phone call um, with Charles and with William, and that it was unproductive. And it didn't go well. Yeah. Right. It was unproductive. unproductive. And one of yeah. the things that they were upset about was. Because, the, you know, the official statement from Buckingham Palace was that they were going to handle this as a family and it was going to be private as a family. Um, all the claims that, you know, 
Meghan and Harry made. But then Roy and Nick have re exposed it. <laughs> exactly, which is exactly what he's going to say. So that was the official thing. Oh. And so one of the things that Gail was saying that Harry and Meghan, they were upset because the royals said they wanted to do this privately. They wanted mm-hmm. to do it as a family and privately, but they were still leaking information to right. the press, including leaking information that was disparaging to Meghan's. Um, you know, against Megan about the bogus bullying claim. Yeah. So the the um, Gail King's one of her co-hosts was literally reading Roya Nika's article. He even mentioned Roya yeah. Nika in the post yeah. as to this is what this was in response to the fact that the royal family they, they jumped over all that. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. They what jumped all over that, and then all the news media uh, outlets. I think uh, Lorraine and uh, uh, BBC and This Morning and all of them, all they heard was, how can, you know, if you're going to resolve an issue with your family, how can you be leaking things to your your friend Gail? And I'm thinking, did you guys just, did you not hear what was said? I feel like there's, they have PhD in selective hearing. Yeah, what they want to hear is what they want to hear, because Roya Nika, is that how you spell it, Roya Nika? Roya Nika, yeah, yeah, she's the one who exposed this whole conversation. Why aren't you questioning Roya Nika? Why she didn't keep a family private conversation together, but she had to write about it. So Gail and the the Sussexes are responding to what was leaked, that it wasn't productive. Because if you are deciding to make this a private conversation, a private family matter, then why is a royal reporter reporting about a conversation that was had? But you're focusing on us, but not even on us, you're focusing on Megan, who probably wasn't the one speaking with Gail. Yeah, which is exactly (laughs) the point. Because when it came out, when the, when, you know, right after, you know, the CBS um, clip came out, Everyone was like, Megan, ha- Megan's friend. And I remember, like, excuse me, Gail literally said Megan and Harry. Yeah. So how is it just Megan? Which yeah. is what they all were trying to it say. Is. Oh, it's Megan's friend. Yeah. It's just had and a, two, a if, if, if the royal family were keeping this a secret, how did Roya know that, one, they had a phone call? Right. Two... Mm-hmm. How did Roya know that the, the royal family are hiring a law, which is all was all part of the article, that they are right. fa- hiring a law firm to handle the um, bogus bullying claim? How did Roya Nika know that Prince yeah. Charles was his friends was you know all upset because they're claiming that Prince Charles was still supporting Harry? How does Roya Nika know that? And one of the squad actually. Mm-hmm. listed from Roya Nika's article all the sources that she cited in there. If all of those people were individual people, there were at least 19 people from the palace gave her information. <laughs> right. That means the leakage is still happening on speed 19 dial. 19 people on speed dial. Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace, and Clarence House leaking information. How did they know that information? If it was a private phone call between just William, his father, uh, Prince Charles, and, and Harry. How did 19 people know this? Yeah. yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. You know, it's, I feel, you know what? I was going to say something. I'm not going to say it. But I, 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 I believe and I know for sure that in the months <laughs> and years to come, the truth will come out. And it will come out where it needs to be, when it needs to come out. And the damage that needs to be done will be done. And whatever reconstruction that needs to take place (laughs) will take place because evil will not win. I'm telling you. Evil will not win. (laughs) It's like you cannot hide when you do evil things. It comes out. It will be exposed. And when it's exposed, it's like a mighty fall. I feel, for me, I just always feel so bad because I'm like, if I was especially like, I think I feel the same way about elderly Trump supporters <laughs> because that's what it is. It's like they have been groomed to believe the lies. They have been groomed to hate. They have been yeah. groomed. It's like, it's what, you know, Buy Investigates did an article about the monstering of Meghan Markle. 
And right. that really taught me a lot because what the, a lot of people who you would see hate Meghan Markle don't cannot even tell you why they why hate her. They, hate her. they don't yeah. have they have no evidence for the things they say about why because the minute you ask them, can you send me evidence? You never hear from them again. Oh, they just they'll call you no no they'll call you all kind of foul words and they'll be like well, too. He, but he, you know, no she made evidence. she made Harry do something uh she made Harry leave and I was like you are you you are making Harry sound like someone who has no backbone the man served two tours like he fought you think he can't make his own mind you don't play with vets right it's like that's kind of like a I think it's a a global acknowledgement right yeah. your, vets, your military men and women you just don't mess with that you give exactly. them that you respect because they have sacrificed something that i know i'm not willing to sacrifice but i am darn grateful right for every single one of them you they might have been political whatever but at the end of the day they are willing to go out the battlefield and fight so you yep. don't play with that, right? You give them the acknowledgement and you respect them because they there is something about someone giving, willing to give their lives, right? For those who are Christians, you know what that means, that, you know, Jesus gave his life, gave his life. So for military men and women, it's not like they're safe. They're not Jesus. We know that, right? But they are deciding to put their life on the line and to be killed. So that way we can... For us in the U.S. to walk around and act the fool sometimes, <laughs> you yeah. Know? And so it's like, no, you don't take that for granted. And for them to really just just honor him that way, you know, that was deplorable. Anyways, let's move on. Let's wrap this segment up, and uh, we move on. We always want to end with a charity, right? Uh, which we will be focusing on actual foundation charities yeah. and other charities. So today, I think it's, it, it's a, it makes sense to go with Genesis Shelter, which if you know anything about Genesis Shelter, they were um, uh, they're a DV uh, domestic violence uh, shelter that is based in Texas that Megan um, uh, highlighted them on their, sh- on their, on their foundation. And uh, we, the squad, just warmed it up and donated. And they even had a a wish, a shopping list on Amazon, which I purchased a few things and sent to them and also donated some money to them. Uh, but it is a charity that <laughs> kind of like goes with the whole conversation today, right? right? Uh, women and kids escaping from abuse and running to a shelter. And during the Texas snowstorm, their whole shelter got destroyed pretty much. Uh, still, and so they needed to evacuate them and place them at different hotels and protect them and then, you know, get that whole place fixed, which Harry and Megan contributed to to help rebuild their, their facility. So uh, we want to highlight them today. And uh, Petal, what do you, what have you read about them and what do you want to share about, say about them? Yeah, you know, I had never heard of them before. It's so funny, yeah, like all the, yeah. the charities and, and organizations that I've heard, only heard about because Megan and Harry highlighted them. Yeah. And it makes our work easier. We're like, oh, good. They do the work and we're like, I know, right? we're it. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's like, they are like, you go to them, they have the charity encyclopedia yeah. that we go, you know, and find yep. out. So how I found out about it was, was there, because of the snowstorm, they, mm-hmm. p- they're part of their roof caved in in yeah. their, one, you know, their center. And so Harry and Megan found out about it and through Archwell decided to replace their whole roof, right. replace the roof and also provide um, other for, for other needs that they have um, yeah. because of that. And the, so that's how I found out about it. And it's so great. And it's such a great segue, you know, as I was saying, um, into moving, moving, leaving abusive situations. <laughs> And going to a place, you know, Harry and Meghan leaving the royal family and moving another continent. And this is about women and children 
by the most vulnerable yeah. stages, leaving abusive situation and being able to find shelter, not just, you know, um, temporary shelter, but the yeah. Genesis also provides and help them to find permanent shelter. They also provide services um, like counseling services, um, yeah. group and also individual. Yeah. They also provide a legal services because they may need to sue, you know, whoever right, right. they abuse or whatever. So they also provide all of those and also um, they, you know, some because one of the things that they said too is because some people literally leave those abusive situations with just the clothes on their backs. Yep. And so yep. they provide clothes, you know, they even one of the things quick things that you could also su su um, supply for them is gently use clothes, you know. Right, they also yeah, have yeah. the Amazon wish list that you can go and um and that you can go and pick something that they need and, and be able to supply that. And we will like provide their uh their handle and their website so that way you guys can still go and contribute they will always take money you know any kind of donation or money any kind of donation to be able to help uh genesis just being beginning right it's a beginning it's a new yeah beginning, which so it's like yeah sense. yeah it's very applicable to uh harry and megan and also just the shelter for the women and children who are there just creating a new start for them a new beginning for them to yeah to. so yeah so that brings up to the end of our very first episode on you know yeah. facts and two cents with pmp and we hope you enjoyed our conversation we will be bringing you much more topics again we will since there's so much going on with the world family we probably will be um living in that space for a bit and then just incorporating other conversations that are happening as well so we will see you guys again soon um we'll subscribe go to our handle at you know facts and two cents spelled out facts and two cents on uh instagram the number two. <laughs> two yeah the number two and cents uh on instagram and on twitter and uh join us there and let's hear right, from you so when you think about our very first episode yeah and, and join us next week for yes. more facts and two cents absolutely <laughs> as megan always says no bad energy <laughs> No bad energy. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.